More than 35 years after entering service with the U.S. Navy, it endures as a versatile frontline warplane. Its simplicity, agility, and durability are a lethal yet inexpensive combination. And that's an equation perfectly suited to the air combat needs of many smaller nations. Because of this, the Skyhawk is certain to play an active role around the globe well into the next century. The predominant thrust of aviation design since World War II has seen planes become larger, incredibly complex, and extravagantly expensive to maintain. McDonnell Douglas's head designer, Ed Heinemann, was a man who not only understood this trend, but was deeply concerned about it. As construction costs soared, so did operational costs. Huge investments were spent in training military personnel to operate increasingly complex systems. Personnel who in a few years' time would simply leave for more lucrative prospects in the private sector. Heinemann was convinced that much of this spending just wasn't necessary. Certainly some efforts, like building air superiority fighters, demanded high degrees of performance and complexity. But for many other types of aircraft, their intended roles could be filled through more simple designs. Heinemann's answer was to create a family of lightweight, low-cost workhorses. At about the same time, the U.S. Navy was having trouble finding a versatile jet aircraft to operate from its carriers. Their stumbling block provided Heinemann with a starting point. And soon, Ed Heinemann and the McDonnell Douglas Skyhawk were well on their way to making military aviation history. Heinemann was eventually proven right in most of his assertions. But initially, in his intense pursuit of a low-cost, lightweight aircraft, he nearly went too far. In fact, the first Skyhawk A4 model was anything but an overnight success. Yet the airframe itself was deemed extraordinary. Using that design, the problems caused by excessive cost cutting were soon rectified. And by the mid-1960s, the A-4 had established itself as one of America's preeminent warplanes. As the design developed, a constant exchange between engineers and service representatives determined the parameters that the aircraft would have to meet. And on the 21st of June, 1952, the U.S. Navy formally issued a contract for the production of a prototype aircraft. It was designated the A-4D, and the specifications it would have to meet were rigid. The A-4D was to be lightweight and compact with a single engine a high-performance carrier-based day attack plane. It was to have nearly unprecedented versatility. It was expected to be capable of carrying out dive bombing, interdiction, and close air support missions. It would be capable of carrying either nuclear or conventional stores, and of striking sea or land targets without fighter protection. The design was to be kept simple in order to ease both manufacture and maintenance costs. With a maximum airspeed of 500 miles an hour, it would be able to carry a 2,000-pound bomb load over a 460-mile radius. Most importantly, the plane would cost less than a million dollars per copy. In the end, Heinemann met and exceeded all of these requirements, even coming in under budget. The average cost of the first 500 aircraft leveling off at well under $900,000 apiece. In October 1953, the A-4D had been fully evaluated. 
confidence in the little plane was so strong that orders were soon placed for 19 different production models. Not only was the Navy becoming more convinced of the A4D's excellence, but world events were creating a more urgent need for them. As the Cold War got hotter, the possibility of nuclear conflict between the superpowers became more real. As the third leg in America's nuclear triad, the U.S. Navy was supposed to play an integral role in America's nuclear deterrent capability. In reality, it was ill-equipped for the task. Its North American Savage bombers were of limited use, and of aircraft available, only the Skyhawk seemed to have the right stuff. The Skyhawk was now an important part of America's tactical nuclear capability. The cat shots, I, I think, are the best part. Uh, it's just, uh, you taxi up and over the shuttle and the guy gives you the turn up signal. Uh, you go to full power and you just, you're off the brakes and you're sitting, uh, you're just sitting there held back at full power.